Hi everyone. Um, I think the game is basically done now. It uh, it basically works. You can calculate all the different wins. Um, there's a sound that plays when the uh, animation is finished. I don't know if you can hear that. And um, I've added more canvases. Added 42 more canvases to get this uh, white circle in the middle of all these little divs here. And um, Basically, it works. Um, if I refresh here, you'll see in the beginning, um, well, there's this clear board button, which um, which uh, basically just reloads the page. And um, after I play one move, there's this undo last move button. So we can undo our move. And it jumps back like that. And uh, it sort of, well, it can still calculate the wins after that. And we'll see that red wins there. So uh, basically, I just wanted to go over the code and just show the uh, the new things that's in it. Um, if we go over to the markup here, uh, let's see what we've added here. Um, yeah, so each of the divs, all of the chip holder divs now have a canvas inside it. And um, those didn't need an ID or anything. They're just referenced by being uh, children of this chip holder div. And... Um, we also have uh, we also have an audio tag at the bottom, and it's an empty audio tag with the ID of peace drop, and we use this as um, we use this to add the audio uh, file in with JavaScript. So uh, let's go over to the script and just uh, see what's new here. Um, at the top, I'm uh, um, creating this variable, local variable sound handle, and this is just uh, core JavaScript. And that's set to document get element by id piece drop and sound handle dot src is the path uh, where that wave file is uh, down here in the create circle I just made a few changes here um, because now we're creating three kinds of circles not just red and blue but also white ones which um you know which give these little circles in the middle of all the divs and makes it look more like a connect four game and um, I think no changes here, no changes to calculating the win. And let's see now. I've added a few properties to this um, to this uh, draggable object right here. So we're selecting all of the um, all of the elements with the class of draggable, which is the canvases, and uh, well, some of the canvases that have the class of draggable, and we have this cancel property here, uh, which is played. Okay, so basically what this means is, um, if the if the element has the class of played, then it's not draggable. So after we play a piece, uh, we're going to give it the class of played, and then this cancel is going to stop me from moving that piece. If we didn't have this, um, after we played a piece, we'd still be able to move it around on the board, which is obviously uh, not what we want. Um, we added this stack property right here. That means um, w if one of the canvases comes across another canvas one, it is going to stack on top of it. Okay, so it's just a bit more natural. Um, the pieces are only movable on the x-axis now, and that was just a decision I made. You know, to put these pieces at the top, and there's no reason they need to be dragged anywhere else. Um, you know, they're dragged at the top of the board and then they're dropped down. So that's why uh, that's like that and revert invalid so um, this is really useful right here this basically means um, the piece will revert if it's not placed in a droppable zone but if it is placed somewhere with uh, the class of droppable then it's it's not going to revert and it's going to go down uh, if we go down here if we go to our droppable here um, on the drop property here we have a function and it takes uh, the event in UI and the first thing we're doing is any canvases with the class of last played we're removing that class and this is necessary uh, for our undo button functionality so we can only have one chip with the class of last played so every time a piece is dropped we first remove uh, anything with the class of last played and then we're going to add it in again at the end of this function and let's just see what else is new here um, this animate uh, tag I've added, or sorry, this animate method I've added a few things here. Um, we have this as um, in this. Uh, the first thing is passed in is the object, 
uh, top and then the distance, which was passed in before. And the, um, the second thing, or the second parameter in this animate function is the speed. So it's going to take 300 milliseconds to go down. It's going to go down in a uh, sort of in a linear speed. It's not going to accelerate or decelerate. It's going to go down in a linear fashion. And the last one is a callback function. So um, this last parameter is when the animation is finished, we can use a callback function here to do something. So what we're doing here is piece drop dot play, and that's going to play that sound um, when it, the animation is finished. Uh, if we keep going down here, uh, here we have an if statement. So if the buttons holder children is uh, less than the length of two, then we're going to append on this HTML right here. So we see when we first start out um, this paragraph here, it only has one child inside it. So after the first move, it sees that uh, the length is only one and it will add this undo button after the first move. And it won't continue to add it with every move because it checks if it's less than two or not. And that gives us the undo button. And then finally when the drop is finished we add the class of last played and played. And this played class is going to stick around um, when we use this in, uh, we use this above, let's see, with the uh, cancel property right here. So we can't move around chips that have been played already. And we also add on the class of last played, and this is needed by our undo button. So finally, let's just look at the, um, the undo button right here. So if it's clicked, the first thing we do is check um, the color if it's a red chip, and if it has the class of last played. Because we only want to um, do this kind of behavior for something that was just played. And basically, we animate it, we send it back to where it originally started from. And um, we add the class of can place, uh, where the square that it landed on, we add the class of can place, remove the class of cannot place, and the current color. And you can basically see what's happening right there. And finally, um, we remove the class of played and last played. Because we're going to do this move totally over again, we're going to remove these classes. Basically all that's happening here is we're reverting everything back to how it was the person uh, when the person uh, did the move. So, and this includes, you know, after they play the move, we're putting the classes back how they were, we're putting the piece back where it was, and and so on. And then we have another else if, if it's a black chip. So that's basically um, all I've done here, and I, I think the game is basically finished now and it works. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do more to it, such as like improving the look of it or adding more functionality, but uh, that's it for now. Thanks for listening.